Hi, good to have you all here. I'm with Tom Truitt today, one of the most interesting men you will find, well, not just in Asheville, actually, in the music business period. Tom is the founder and CEO of Music Row Search, and he is the creator of Who Knew, which is the newest, hottest ticket in Nashville. <laughs> Seriously. The last one was uh, unbelievable. It was so packed and so jammed and so fun. Totally sold out. In fact, yeah. stopped selling tickets two days in advance. Yeah. So, so would you like to tell our audience exactly what Who Knew is? Well, Who Knew was, I guess, born as a passion project. Um, interesting story. I was in the hospital in the summer of 2014. Uh, recovering mm. from a hastily called quadruple bypass procedure oh. and called a good friend of mine on the phone to update him on my health. Uh, this is a gentleman named Jim Griffin who lives outside of Washington, D.C. Mm -hmm. He's one of my music industry heroes. He's an icon in the music industry. And Jim, just as an offhand kind of comment, said, you know what you need to do next? You need to create Nashville's answer to the New York Tech Meetup. That's cool. And I was like, okay, I've, I've heard about that. Tell me more. Uh -huh. And so he started describing what the New York Tech Meetup is and why it's so popular. And basically, I love a challenge, and that sounded like fun. And I took it upon myself to try to recreate the yeah. New York Tech Meetup in Nashville focused on the music industry. And we've had six events, and every one of them have been very successful. The, the most recent one that you just yeah. referred to, we had over 600 people there throughout the night um, mm -hmm. you know with it's it's really two events in one now it's the speaking event is the mm -hmm. first part right and then the after party <coughs> is a, a musical event uh, mm -hmm. but in total we had 620 people come through the door that night yeah. it's very exciting and the last one was uh, film commercial video game music supervisors from new york la and nashville right yeah, it was our yeah. first attempt to do what I had been referring to all along as Shark Tank. Uh, when I first started thinking yeah. about what Who Knew could be, I would describe it as a little bit of Shark Tank, a little bit of TED Talk, and yeah. a little bit of speed dating. <laughs> well, in the first five events, we nailed yeah. TED Talk and speed dating. Yep. We didn't attempt anything related to Shark Tank. And yeah. we, we really pulled off a cool event, if I do say so myself. I was killer. In fact, uh, when is it going on TV? <laughs> you think a lot like Jim does. Um, well, I'm thinking between you and Anastasia, you've got everything rolling there, well, ready to roll. Um, I'm not sure of that. Yeah. Uh, stay tuned, though. We do yeah. have plans to continue to, to develop Who Knew Nashville yeah. and possibly take it on the road to other cities. I've, in fact, I've been contacted by one other city already Excellent. and, and yeah. knocking on the door of a second one. Sweet. Yeah. So it could be interesting. I love it. That's great. So, I love Who Knew. Now, Music Row Search, actually, you place top execs in all areas. You are a headhunter. Is that right? That's right. That's a term that I actually embrace. A lot of people that yeah. do what I do for a living don't like that term. I actually well, embrace we, it. Well, we actually have a photo of you on, a, on one of your recent headhunting trips. I believe this is probably... Oh, wait, that's the wrong photo. That's not you, is it, actually? I'm sorry. That's, I'm no, I have no idea who that is, but that, is, that looks like some, some kind of headhunter. Now, I'm guessing that's why, you, that's why some people do not embrace the term headhunter, probably, huh? No, people, that, people that, that refer to themselves as executive recruiters. Yes, okay. Executive placement consultants yeah. shy away from headhunting because okay. they think that that is a dirty word. In yeah. reality, headhunting is exactly what we do. Yeah. We, we headhunt. We hunt heads. Sorry, I can't even say it. Um, it it's, it's not uh -huh. uh, romantic. It's not elegant. Yeah. But it's a lot of fun, and I enjoy it, and, uh, well, and I make a decent living. And speaking of fun, this is also on your resume. Uh, who knew that you were left shark? <laughs> <laughs> so. That was a blast. That was a great Halloween yes. uh, party. And yeah, that's my son's shark outfit that I co opt for the <laughs> night. Well, you were hard to miss being probably the tallest guy there in a left shark suit. <laughs> that's, that, that's pretty memorable. Uh, you've that's done your cool. homework. Yes. Well, so uh, how did you get into head hunting? 
I was recruited into it. I was happily living oh. in Atlanta as a stockbroker back in the mid 80s and mm. a company that I had sold books for during yeah. my summer vacations in college gave me oh. a ring and this was in the fall of 1989 uh -huh. and asked me to come to Nashville and help them launch a new division of the company that was an executive search division or headhunting company. Initially I said no, I didn't mm. want to leave Atlanta, but after about six months of yeah. continual discussions. We finally agreed on a deal where I would come to Nashville for six months, learn the business, and then go right back down to Atlanta to open an office. Hmm. So I got here in May of 1990, and two weeks later I met my wife. <laughs> and uh, same woman, 25 years later, here we are. Changes things, then. <laughs> it sure does. It sure does. It's all about a girl. Well, that's true. I was in Reno, and packed up and uh, given up my lease and was headed to Los Angeles and uh, when I met my future wife and I wound up uh, buying a 35 foot fifth wheel and thinking temporary and we'll see where this is going wound up spending the winter in Reno which is I wouldn't recommend anyone to uh, live anywhere where you get three feet of snow in a uh, in an RV <laughs> I woke up uh, Thanksgiving morning with the roof touching my nose from a, a heavy snow. <laughs> wow. No yeah. Thanksgiving. <laughs> yeah, Thanksgiving. Not even winter. <laughs> Not even winter, no. It was uh, I, probably the worst winter in years that I picked. But as you used to say, things change. The things we'll do for love. Yeah. I think there's a song there. Maybe. I'm not a songwriter. I'm trying to remember. Can't remember if it's already done or not. If it isn't, it will be done probably by the time this video is posted. Someone will. Well, I got co write. Write it. There you go. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> uh, like Walking in the Rain. Da, 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 da. I think it may already be a song. Shoot. So, uh, and, and wow. So you've, uh, you literally didn't even mean to get into it, but obviously you're enjoying it. Yeah, so to finish that thought, I, I spent yeah. 13 years in that company, and all of mm -hmm. my business in those days was technology and management consulting firms. Yeah. And this was the first internet run-up of the mid-late 90s. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Honestly, Gary, there were days in the mid-90s where I used to kind of ask my staff, do they really pay us to do this? Um, <laughs> it was the supply and demand inequality yeah. for labor. Uh -huh was so skewed in our favor, it was like, you know, shooting fish in a barrel. Wow. Uh, but all good things come to an end. When the internet bubble burst and 9-11 yeah. hit, I really had decided <coughs> I'd had enough. 13 years was a great mm -hmm. run with that company, and I sold out my interest in that business and, and left headhunting forever, I thought. Hmm. But things change, as we said a moment ago. Yeah. And what brought you into the music business? Was it just being in Nashville? Or? Well, I grew up a, a big fan of music. I have four older brothers and sisters, yeah. and I was the beneficiary of listening to their music uh, all those years. Yeah. My brother kind of got me into a band called The Grateful Dead, and I yeah. spent uh, a lot of time and a lot of money chasing The Grateful Dead around in the 80s and 90s, and really got enamored with the music industry. Yeah observing what the Grateful Dead did. And when I finished my headhunting career the first time, uh, I never thought mm -hmm. I'd come back into it, but after a couple other career stops in 2007, yeah. I decided I want to get into the music industry. Um, I want to make my living in this business somehow, some way. And what I did is I started taking meetings with friends and friends of friends in the mm -hmm. industry. And I'll never forget these this a series of meetings, and they were all very interesting um, and on top of each other, <coughs> spring of 2007. And the very first one I had was with a, a woman that runs a business in Nashville called Flood Bumstead McCready McCarthy. The, the woman I'm referring to mm -hmm. is Marianne McCready. And about five minutes into my meeting with her, I asked her, who are the go-to headhunters in the music industry? And she gave me a funny look like, I've never heard of that. And I was like, yeah. what do you mean? There, there's not a go-to headhunter? There's not the guy, so to speak? And she said, no, I've never heard of that. Wow. Wow was right. So I left that meeting, and I 
two days later, I had a similar meeting with a, another well-known executive, a guy named Scott Hendricks, who's a producer right. and an A and R executive. Mm -hmm. Identical meeting. Uh, Scott said, "No, I've never heard of that." Really. Two days later, another meeting. It and was so after just a good old boy network, huh? Yeah, more or less. Yeah, it's yeah. a it's a closed ecosystem, <coughs> so to speak. So after mm -hmm. hearing that from three or four different executives, mm -hmm. I decided there was an opportunity to become that guy. Yeah. And that's what I set out to do in the spring of 2007. I, I rented a little room on Music Row in the RCA building, Studio mm -hmm. A and B. Oh yeah. And Music Row Search was born. Cool. And I haven't looked back. That's yeah. I mean, that's brilliant. Find a need and fill it, or create a need, or create. Yeah, there you go. Well, and speaking of your love of music, so let's say you're having a house party. Name three songs that would be on your playlist. Three songs. Yeah, three songs that you'd make sure played at your house party. Well, I've got to pull from one of my favorite bands of all time, REM. Mm -hmm. uh, would Great probably group. be a song called Rockville, or Don't Go Back to Rockville. Yeah, I um, know that one. Probably Dead Flowers by the Rolling Stones. Oh, interesting choice. One of my favorite songs of all time. That's interesting. I'd almost forgotten about that song. Oh, There's man, that, that's, to yeah. me, that's my favorite Rolling Stones song. Check it out as soon as the video stops rolling. <laughs> and my, my third one would probably be to appeal to the masses at, at this house <coughs> party, probably September by Earth, Wind, and Fire. Sweet. That's good. So my, you can tell how old I am. Well, my band in college used to do that. It was college. It was either college or Vegas. I can't remember. Very cool. Excellent. So give us some fun fact about yourself that, that most people wouldn't know about you. Another great question. Um, Back to the Grateful Dead. One of the things yeah. that I became enamored with, like a lot of deadheads do, is mm -hmm. trading their music. So back right. in the day, I yeah. collected cassette tapes, and then right. dat tapes, and then we mm -hmm. migrated from those to yeah. hi-fi VCR tapes, oh, that's and then right. to CDs, yeah. 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 and then to hard drives. So over the years, I have accumulated what I believe is one of the most in incredible live music collections of anyone I know, the, wow. the centerpiece of which is just about every known live Grateful Dead recording and or wow. Jerry Garcia band and any <laughs> of the Jerry-related projects. <laughs> wow. Yeah, and I've got the same thing for Fish and Widespread Panic, too. Wow. I'm a big fan of the jam band scene. Serious. That is serious. Yeah. So what's the best advice that you've ever gotten from anyone? Wow. These are great questions. Best advice, um, a, a boss, actually my boss's boss at that same company that drew mm -hmm. me to Nashville in 1990 yeah. taught me something that has really stuck with me over the years, and that yeah. is in everything that you do, attempt to be for what is right, not who is right. I like that. And if you think about that, if we yeah. approach problems or disagreements or any sort of business negotiation yeah. with that as the backdrop, and let's let's figure out what is right here as opposed to who is going to be right. Think of the solutions that we can yeah. arrive at, and think of the problems that we could solve mutually doing that. The point is to make it a win-win. Right. Yeah. I, I really like that attitude. I think that's a, a good mentor for a boss. Right on. That definitely. So, so what are your websites? Where can someone get on your mailing list to find out about who knew, you know, and be able to get tickets, all of that, as well as uh, Music Row Search, of course. Right. Well, Music Row Search is <coughs> musicrowsearch.com. Mm -hmm. um, who knew lives in a lot of different online places. We're getting ready to launch who knew nash.com. That's not out yet. Mm -hmm. We'll be in about a month. Okay. But we're all over Facebook and Twitter. The hashtag is uh, hashtag who knew nash. Our Facebook page is Music Row Search. Hmm. Not really sure why, uh, but nonetheless, uh, we, yeah. we use social media aggressively and actively cool. to promote not only the events but the people that speak at these events. Mm -hmm. And we're, we're trying to help you know enhance their brands right. as well. Excellent. Uh, Twitter, any other 
social media, Instagram, any of those? Instagram, Who Knew Nash as well. Okay. So literally look for you anywhere and everywhere on social media. Right. Who Knew Nash. Excellent. Right. Anything else you'd like to uh, mention about your companies and the work you do uh, before we wrap it up? Yeah, Who Knew is something that I think has really been interesting to watch evolve. Um, mm -hmm. We had six uh -huh. events in 2015. We're going to have six more in 2016. Uh, incidentally, we do them every other month in odd number months. The next event is January 21st. Right. Uh, we're going to be yeah. going sometime in, in mid-late March. We, we tend to shoot for the second or third Thursday of the month. Mm -hmm. Uh, but we've not nailed yeah. down March, May, July, September, or November dates specifically yet. Right. Um, what we're going to do is build upon what we built in 2015. Uh, we did five events that mirrored the New York Tech Meetup. That is, mm -hmm. we recruit a slate of A-list speakers, right. give them 10 minutes to sort of <coughs> tell their stories, promote mm -hmm. their brands, share their wisdom about the music industry. Yeah. Um, and then we have an after party that features, you know, live entertainment. Yep. The last event that we just did two weeks ago mm -hmm. was a departure from that format. What we did there is we had essentially a panel discussion of right. seven A-list music supervisors. Mm -hmm. And then after a 30-minute, very engaging discussion, we pulled them off the stage and seated them in front of the stage and then put on music Shark Tank. Mm -hmm. And it was really cool to see that unfold. What, what each yes. of those supervisors did, <coughs> excuse me, was they described a specific music mm -hmm. need they had right now. We mm -hmm. had pre-screened seven different artists to come up and perform one song each against one of those requests. Right. And what we had hoped would happen would be a Shark Tank type discussion and negotiation. Mm -hmm. It it really went great. And um, that what was so funny and terrific was after the very first artist finished, who by the way, you know, totally slayed me. I was I I want to go co write with her. After she got done, a supervisor that hadn't even requested that song immediately broke in and said she wanted it. Right. <laughs> it was perfect. It was just like Shark Tank. It was wonderful. Three supers actually wanted yeah. That artist. So, yeah. Well, the, in the aftermath of that, I'll give you some, <coughs> some facts. First off, we had one sync take place right there on the spot that night. One deal got done. Excellent. Uh, there are two more that are working their way through the process, mm -hmm. and it looks like they're going to happen. Mm -hmm. But then at the end of the night, we revealed a website where any of the participants right. or the, the folks that attended the meeting could submit their music. And mm -hmm. we had a 48-hour period where you could submit music. In those 48 hours, we received 512 songs. Wow. We were blown away by that kind of response. That's Who cool. knew? Yeah. <laughs> it's really super. I loved it. I'm, I'm waiting for the next one and actually would like to get involved in any way I could. We'd love to have because, you involved. Because uh, I know a lot of music supers, and you can never know enough music supers. Right. <laughs> well, we're going to come back probably uh -huh. for the yeah. May event in replicate what yeah. we just did. One more quick question. Are any of the uh, events videoed and put on uh, YouTube or a website or anywhere? Right. We do have a YouTube channel. I should have rattled that one off earlier. Great. It's, uh, it's on YouTube. Who knew Nash as Excellent. well. Good. Um, we have a lot of viewers in both New York, LA, uh, Florida, and Texas. So that way they can get on and check these out. Yeah, we've, yeah, we've already got about a dozen of our former speakers up mm -hmm. there. Um, video has been an interesting problem I've had to solve uh, each time, but we hopefully have mm -hmm. a long-term solution in place now. Yeah, definitely. It's, it's wonderful. The, uh, in fact, uh, I never thought to ask you uh, how I got on your first mailing list. I was at the very first Who Knew, and at first it was just, um, you know, I, saw, I, I just looked and I said, well, this is, I mean, nothing like this. You know, this is great. I loved it. Cool. And then after I showed up and spent the evening there, it was. It was wonderful. And people were a little cautious about 
doing the heavy networking thing at the very first one because everyone was trying to figure out what was going on. And by the second and third one, I had people shoving business cards, you know, in my pockets and <laughs> all over. So definitely, uh, it's definitely uh, really caught on and everyone's really digging it. It's terrific. Well, I will tell you this. Yeah. The, the reason I wanted to launch it initially mm -hmm. was as a headhunter, my job is to connect people. Yeah. I put companies with companies, people right. with people, people with companies. And unfortunately, in today's world, too much of our connecting involves a device, a yeah. cell phone or an iPad or a computer. Mm -hmm. If we can connect like right. this, right. then that's, to me, much more effective. And we wanted to create an open forum where people yeah. can come together, freely exchange ideas, mm -hmm. hopefully do deals. And I get, exactly. after every yeah. one of these events, I get... A, at least five to ten emails, texts of people thanking me for putting on the event and letting mm -hmm. me know, gosh, I got an internship, I got hired, I'm now co-writing music with this cool. person I met. Yeah. That's really gratifying to know that that Sweet. sort of thing is happening. Excellent. Yep. And check out Who Knew. If you're in the Nashville area, you got to come live because it's really fun. And there's drinking involved too. Which never hurts. <laughs> Which never hurts. Thanks a bunch for tuning in. We appreciate it, and we'll see you later.